Histology Laboratory for Cartilage and Bone, Anatomy 2203. Examine slides 4 and 18 for hyaline cartilage. The slide or specimen that's on the field of view is slide number 4, trachea. And one can see on this particular surface the pseudostratified columnar epithelium that is ciliated that was examined previously. The tissue we're examining today is cartilage and it extends from about where the tip of the arrow is now illustrating to approximately this area here. The remainder being of a denser type of connective tissue. So this is a specimen as seen at low power of hyaline cartilage. The substructure that can be made out even at this magnification, particularly on the side as indicated by the arrow, is a thin connective tissue capsule surrounding this cartilaginous piece known as the perichondrium. Inside the perichondrium we can see the matrix or this uh, made up of this extracellular type of material, sort of a homogeneous glassy type of material as indicated by the tip of the arrow and uh, constitutes the greater majority of this particular tissue. Remember in the connective tissues the extracellular materials are the predominant features. Now scattered within this extracellular matrix are small cells the cells of cartilage referred to as chondrocytes and these are being illustrated at the tip of the arrow and here are some that look like they've been blown up or have died somehow during processing. These small cells, the chondrocytes, reside in small spaces within this dense extracellular matrix known as lacunae. So each of the cells resides in a little space or a little container, so to speak, known as a lacuna. Let's briefly examine each of these substructural features at increased magnification. This is that portion of hyaline cartilage as seen at increased magnification. This layer here, from where the tip of the arrow is now illustrating, to about this point is the perichondrium, a connective tissue surrounding the cartilaginous block. This homogeneous glassy type of material scattered throughout the field and being traced by the arrow is the extracellular matrix. The cells identified primarily by the nuclei are the cells of cartilage known as chondrocytes. and they reside within a little space known as a lacunae. Most often the cytoplasm fills the entire lacunae and so the plasma lemma or the cell membrane resides right next to the wall of these lacunae and sometimes they're difficult to uh, actually uh, visualize because the cell is filling this entire space. Sometimes it shrinks back and you can see just a little halo of where the uh, 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 the lunar space really is. Mainly what you're seeing in this preparation are the nuclei of chondrocytes as the cytoplasm has degenerated a little bit and shrunken uh, back. So this is what's uh, after that shrinkage or the death of the cytoplasm one is seeing the lunar space uh, in these particular areas. But normally if you get a fairly decent one like these chondrocytes here uh, you can identified by the nuclear profile, the entire cytoplasm fills that little lacunar space and you can see sort of the boundary just at the very tip of the arrow, this little hairline that goes around uh, this particular cell. Nonetheless, each cell resides within a space known as a lacunae. This is slide number 18, again hyaline cartilage from the trachea, but stained using a subtly different method. Nonetheless, the same features as identified on the previous slide can be made out, and let's illustrate those. First of all, the connective tissue capsule or membrane surrounding the cartilage, from here to here, known as the perichondrium. 
Next one can make out chondrocytes residing within spaces known as lacuna. And the lacuna are scattered throughout the extracellular matrix, this homogeneous type of material shown here. Let me very briefly illustrate uh, these details at increased magnification. The perichondrium extends from this point to this point, and you can see the boundary right here. It becomes more of a homogeneous type of material. So this is the perichondrium. The extracellular matrix is shown here. Here you can see a lacunae, and within it the chondrocyte, the nucleus being the dot, and you can see the cytoplasmic edge of this uh, dying or dead chondrocyte as it's shrunken away from its surrounding space, the lacunae. This is slide number 20, human epiglottis, stained specifically to demonstrate elastic cartilage. So this preparation has been stained to demonstrate elastin. Elastic cartilage is identical to hyaline cartilage in many respects, but in addition has an abundance of elastic tissue within it, or elastic fibers. So the same features will be present. A surrounding perichondrium, chondrocytes within lacunae, the spaces, and between the lacunae and coursing throughout the matrix these dark black fibers, elastic fibers, in addition to collagen and ground substance as uh, is true of hyaline cartilage. So it has the additional feature of having elastic fibers and tissue within it. Uh, other than that, most of the name structures remain the same. This is the same specimen seen at increased magnification to once again illustrate the perichondrium. Notice that it too has a few elastic fibers within it that stain a dark black such as this one. That's to be expected. <clears throat> the extracellular matrix of the cartilage begins at this point. So this is the matrix of cartilage coming in here. One can make out lacunae with the contained chondrocytes. And as they move to the interior, uh, they're more expanded. So this is a chondrocyte filling up a lacunae. And you can see the dense amount of elastic material scattered between uh, the lacunae and chondrocytes uh, within that centrally lying matrix. This is slide number 19, an example of fibrocartilage taken from, I believe, an intervertebral disc. This cartilage is a little bit different than hyaline and elastic cartilage in that generally it lacks a perichondrium. However, lacunae and chondrocytes still can be made out. They're usually in long lines or trains or chains, whatever you would like to describe them, strings of chondrocytes uh, as indicated by the pointer. And these chondrocytes, again, reside in a little bit of ground substance, so they do indeed have a little lacunar space around them. Uh, the extracellular matrix, however, is primarily a fibrous type of material, mainly of type 1 collagen, and hence her name, fibrocartilage. The ground substance is at a minimum and is really just immediately adjacent to the chondrocytes which produce it, and so they can develop a small lacunae. This is a relatively rare uh, type of cartilage and usually other than inter intervertebral discs it's sort of a transition tissue between uh, fibrous or tendinous type of tissue and bone. This is the fibrocartilage specimen as seen at increased magnification. Do you show uh, one of these trains or strings of chondrocytes and their lacunae? So the cells have shrunken down to this bit the space can still be made out, the lacunar uh, space, as one can see. So there is a little bit of a ground substance here. So you can see lacunae, they're contained chondrocytes, more often than not located into these long strings or chains. And in between this, in this extracellular matrix, the fibrous component is the dominant feature that sets it apart, sort of a stringy type of material because of the type 1 collagen. Now sometimes if you take a condenser out of the microscope, which I'll do here, 
Now I'll look at it more carefully, and if you can drop your light, you can also see this, which you wouldn't see as comparing it to Highland cartilage. Uh, it would be a smooth, in the Highland cartilage, it would be a smooth homogeneous uh, matrix. Notice here it has this fibrous or fibrillar type of appearance due to the abundance of the type 1 collagen. Remember, Highland cartilage has a type 2 collagen associated with it, and together with the ground substance, it has the same refractive index, so its uh, cartilage matrix has a very homogeneous rather than a fibrillar appearance to it. This is slide 21. It's a ground section of compact bone. Now remember what a ground section is. It's a piece of bone that is ground very thin on an emery wheel and then placed on a cover slip and then viewed. Uh, it's not a section of material. Therefore, all the material you're viewing and the various substructures one is seeing, are, in actual fact, is the matrix of bone. Now the features that can be seen even at the low power objective if we go through the items on your checklist for a compact bone are osteon units. An osteon unit looks like a tree trunk that's been cut in cross section. One is shown here. So it extends from this point all the way to here. From this point down to here. And you can see this is a fairly large one. Another one is shown here. Partial of one is shown here, and another one is shown at this particular location. So those are osteon units or herversion systems. At the center of each one of these herversion units or osteon units is a herversion canal, such as indicated by the arrow. This contains the vascular supply to the compact bone. So at the center of each Osteon or herversion system is the herversion canal which contains the blood vascular supply to compact bone. And I've been illustrating these herversion canals with the tip of the arrow. Now each of these herversion systems is made up of surrounding layers of bone called lamellae. And so this structure here, each one of these layers that surrounds the herversion canal is a lamellar unit. So this is a lamellae, this is a lamellae, this is a lamellae, lamellae, and lamellae. And if we look at uh, this fragment of an osteon called an interstitial lamellae, you can see the lamellae one here, it's these layers or sheets of bone. Also scattered within the field, one can see these little dark spots or areas. These are the lacunae of bone, those little spaces within the extracellular matrix, just like cartilage. These are called lacunae in bone as well, and they contain the bone cell, which you cannot see here, known as an osteocyte. Now let's examine this osteon unit at increased magnification and put in one more additional detail. This is that osteon unit, the larger one, seen at high magnification. To illustrate the details uh, of some of these uh, previously identified features, the one item that we did not illustrate at the low power were these little interconnecting canals called canaliculi between the uh, lacunar units and between osteocytes. So these little fine channels look like little spider legs coursing and interconnecting the lacunae are known as canaliculi. So this entire field was that osteon unit. The herversion canal is now where the arrow resides. The little lacunae that contain the osteocytes are shown in black because they're filled with ground dust and don't transmit light. The canaliculi interconnect those lacunar units, as you can see, all the way to the version canal. And if we go back and review at increased magnification, 
This sheet of bone here is a lamellar unit. This I'm tracing now is the another sheet or layer of bone called a lamella. Another one coursing around this way. Another one here. So these kind of layers of bone, though they're not quite as obvious uh, at the low power here or the higher power here. Here they're a little bit perhaps clearer at this uh, on this side. This layer of bone right here that the center is going through the center is a lamella. Another one is shown here. Another one is shown here. And they are being crossed by the little tiny canaliculi.